Just like the other NFC Divisional games, Seattle and Chicago have played this season before. And in that game, the Bears handed the Seahawks their most lopsided loss in more than nine years. Seattle and Matt Hasselbeck trying to avenge that this weekend, and they will have Sean Alexander, unlike the last time. As we say hello here on the v NFL Preview, alongside NFL.com's Jason. Pat Kerwin, I'm Jason Horvitz. No, I'm Jason, you're Pat. There, <laughs> that's how it goes. But let's break down this game right now, and, sure. and, and let's start with the Seattle team from last week. And on the post-game show on Sunday, you said never apologize for a victory because they may have gotten lucky with Tony Romo bobbling the snap. They may have won anyway. You see the offense and the defensive numbers from last week. Uh, explain this in comparison to what they can do with Chicago. Well, I think they're going into a hornet's nest here. Now, we're going to focus on Grossman in a minute here, but the last time these two teams played, there was no Sean Alexander. There was also no Jeremy Stevens. Last week, Jeremy Stevens was a major player in the performance for Seattle to win with two touchdowns. He's the biggest red zone threat that Matt Hasselbeck has right now. Now, and if the weather is as they say it's going to be, if it's snowing, what does Dan Marino always say? If it's snowing, we're throwing. That's right. So I expect to see Saddle come out and try to throw the football against And spread guys. them out because they have the wide yes. receivers. And you might as well spread them out because one of the other things that, that we will get into and we're going to get into right now is the fact that the Chicago defense, which is vaunted and, and, and terrified, the last five games, it hasn't been that good. You see the comparison there, the first 11 games to the last five. They are giving up nearly 265 yards a game in the past. And, you know, people talk about Tommy Harris as being a run stuffer. You and I both agree he's much more important to that passing game. He's an absolute uh, force in the passing game. I'll give you an example. The last time they played, two sacks and four hits on the quarterback. Six times he got to the quarterback. Now, right, let, let's talk, call, call him Warren Sapp of the old Tampa defense. Right behind him was Mike Brown. Five tackles and a big-time force in the running game. He's missing, too. So neither of those guys, so You've exactly. got two core players, and that's why the Bears have had a hard time adjusting. I went back and watched a couple of games of tape on this. This is a team that liked to play Lovey Smith cover, too. Once they lost Tommy and Mike to stop the run, they started dropping the safety in the box a little bit more than they like to do, and that made them vulnerable to a lot of things. What does that mean for Sean Alexander this weekend? You know, I think Sean Alexander, they're going to have to drop that. I think running down situations, look for the bare safeties to get down in there and try to stop Sean Alexander. He only had 69 yards rushing against the Dallas Cowboys. This is a better defense. I think, I think they'll land up playing more cover, too, if they can get a lead, thinking that Matt's going to try to beat him with the passing game. Yeah, last year they played uh, Steve Smith in the home playoff game in single coverage. They're not going to be able to do that this time because there's going to be four receivers. They're gonna, they may have to play single right. coverage on the, on the receivers. All right, let's talk about Rex Grossman. You mentioned that we talk about him. You know, everyone's been against him. You know, he had seven games this year with a passer rating over 100, but five others that were under 37, including a zero in the last home game against the Packers. You saw there his last four home games, three touchdowns, nine interceptions. What's the leash like here, Paul? Well, first of all, I think of the eight quarterbacks in the playoffs this weekend, the most pressure is not on Peyton Manning. It's on Rex Grossman. His career is on the line, as I see it. This is a one-and-you're-out tournament, and I, think if you, I don't think he'd be pulled in the first half. Don't think that would happen. But if at halftime they're down by 10, 14 points, and they're going nowhere offensively, I think we'd see Brian Greasy. I think you're going to have to, and there's a lot of pressure on this kid. Now, the good point is this. The last time he was in this situation, a few weeks ago, all the cameras are doing in the pregame are showing Brian Greasy. The kid responded and had a good game. That was the game at St. Louis. He yes. played very well, and it was a Monday nighter. All right. Let's talk with the offense here for the Bears as well, other than Rex Grossman, because he's got a couple of running backs they can pound it in there. Thomas Jones, Cedric Benson. Sure. How do they uh, stack well, up here? Well, go back to the last game. They went, this is an undersized Seattle defense. They're, they move around very well. They're a defense built to play with the lead, a little bit like the Colts. The last time they played, Benson and Thomas Jones got together for 35 carries and 135 yards and two touchdowns. We're going to see a lot of that in this game. I think this game plan here is to shelter Grossman. Don't expose him unless you have to. And then if they get into a situation situation where they have to, then we might see Greasy just because of that. Let it snow, let it throw. Right. If it snows, let it throw. All right, one, one other key ingredient to this game that, that I think you should watch out for, and Absolutely. we kind of agree on this, special teams is huge in football, especially in a game when you may see a lot of punting. How about Devin Hester? He set a record this year with six special teams touchdowns, two kick returns, three punt returns, and, of course, that field goal return, which the Bears are making famous every year. What role does he play here? A huge role. And here's the ripple effect. Seattle's had a lot of injuries. Everybody knows about it. Backups that were core special teams players are now moving into starting roles, nickel and dime roles, playing more of the game. That hurts special teams. You're also looking at a Seattle special team that gave up a 93-yard kickoff touchdown to Dallas last week to a kid named Miles Austin at a Monmouth University. This is Devin Hester, folks. Devin Hester will have an impact in this football game. Last couple of weeks, his numbers haven't been great. 
I thought they were kicking the ball out of bounds. I talked to a special teams coach and said, no, they're kicking between the boundary and the numbers, trying to box him into a corner and not give him the whole field to work with. He has scored touchdowns in those situations. And I think he's, he's due for a big play. Yeah, he is. And he could really help Rex Grossman. Maybe an opening kickoff touchdown like we saw in the national championship game. All right, Bears, the one seed, but a lot of people don't think the Bears are the team to go to the Super Bowl. But do they win this game? I think they do win this game. I, you know, I like Seattle, and they're courageous, and they battle through a lot of problems. They're not a great road team. They're in Chicago. The Chicago defense, I believe, since Tommy Harris and Mike went out, they've been experimenting with a lot of different looks, realizing we've already clinched the one seed. Let's find out some of the things we might have to do later on. I think you'll see a lot of their old defense, two coverage, rolling four tackles through inside, trying to create some pressure with the ends, and I think the Chicago Bears win this football game. You said Seattle, not a good road team, 4-4. Four and four this season on the road, and uh, they mm -hmm. leave Quest Field for the playoff game in the divisional game at Soldier Field, and I hope it snows. It'll make it more interesting. For more on this game or any other in the divisional round, be sure to stay right here on CBS Sports Live. For Pat Kerwin, I'm Jason Lewis. Enjoy the football. Take care.